Hello. Hello. <clears throat> so I am trying new software called Be Live TV, maybe Be Live TV. Anyway, um, so that it has that cute border, and this is the first time I've used it. So hopefully, this is working right. If it's not, then I guess I'll re-record it. But um, if it is working and you see it, just give me some love on the screen so I know. Um, I, yeah, it's all brand new. It's all fun. Anyway, um, so I, all this week or this month, I've been talking about outsourcing, why you should do it, how you can find amazing contractors. Um, types of things you should outsource, things like that. So um, today though, I want to chat more about how to build your team. So like me, you've worked hard to build your company, right? And for a long time, you've been the face of it. You've written everything. You've designed your website. You've sent your own invoices. You spend hours and hours every week um, making it work. Right. And and making sure that it's a good experience for your clients and your tribe and your prospects. But it can be a little bit exhausting. Like I've been there and I have three little kids, so I totally get it. Um, but I think that also is a phase that we all go through, like that you're doing everything and you're not outsourcing. You're not sharing things with your team because um, I've been there, too. But I'm glad it's over. <laughs> just let's just acknowledge that for a minute. Um, I, I still sometimes have moments like that, but, but just know that the time will come that you'll be remembering those days too, that you won't be so focused on doing every single thing yourself. Um, because there will come a time that you'll actually need some help. So if you are currently outsourcing, awesome. Let me know. Um, give me some love. If you're currently building a team comment or, um, do a heart. If you are currently outsourcing um, and let me know how how you outsource, who you outsource to. Is it a graphic designer? Is it a VA? Um, is there someone helping you with your content? Is there someone helping you find speaking engagements? Um, is there someone doing your taxes or your accounting? Those are all considered outsourcing and they're all considered part of your team, helping you build your vision and um, go to the next step. So. Those are critical. Having a team like that is is critical for going to the next step um it's something that you, you just can't build a business by yourself you even at the very least you need a tribe you need some people to to be there lifting you up um building you up so today i'm going to talk specifically about building your content team which you're probably thinking what the heck do i need one of those Yes, you need one of those. <laughs> At the very, very least, you need a process for your content, what you're doing with it after you are recording things or talking about things, how to get them out on the different platforms. You know, when you're writing a blog post, making sure that it's it's going out on Reddit or LinkedIn Pulse, that it's being shared on social media and in your newsletter. It's important to have all those things identified and have a checklist. So if you need help with that, um, I do have a content creation checklist um, on my website, You can, but you can comment checklist and I'll just send it to you right after I finish recording this video um, that will help walk you through and, and give you some ideas of the types of things that you can be doing for your content and should be doing for your content. Um, I am Christy Hansvik of Simply Online. And we take our clients from invisible to visible online in 30 minutes a week or less. So the way we do that is by taking your Facebook live videos or your podcasts or your audio, some sort of pre-recorded audio or video, and we create four to six other types of content for you so that your message is shared with the world in a bunch of different ways. So that's, that's what we focus on. Um, Outsourcing is a big thing. It can take a lot of time. It can take money. It can take a few tries before you find the right person. Um, I've experienced that as well, where I bring someone on and it's just not a good fit. And so we we try the next person and that's okay. That's that's part of growing and that's part of building your team is that you'll run into those, that, that you'll experience all of those. Um, there are things that you can do a little bit to make it a little bit easier though. Um, I have built a team. I, my team is amazing. I can see that Tay is watching right now. And we, so I currently have four, um, subcontractors that work with me and they are, I would not be where I am without them. 
So there are ways that you can build an amazing team and that it can be a seamless process. Um, so, but specifically, I'm going to talk about content, building a content team. So first, you have to figure out what you want to outsource, right? You, you can't just call someone up and say, hey, I want to hire you. Um, what's your rate? Because they need, you need to set the expectations for them. They need to know what they're doing, um, what processes you already have in place, things like that. So the short answer to that question is you need to outsource the things that need to get done, but don't necessarily make the cash register ring. So for me, that's social media, customer service, finances, um, and then you can also put in their content. And I'll share with you how to make that happen in a little bit. When we start working with someone, we tell our clients to keep a list for a few days of every single thing that they do. I know that sounds overwhelming, but it really is super beneficial for you to know exactly what you need help with. So it can be super simple. Um, just jot things down on a piece of paper or a post-it. I'm super, super fan of post-its. They're everywhere on my desk. Um, or you can use like a time tracking software. Um, one I've just recently started using is called Clockify. And I like it because it's free, number one. But two, it's really easy to track time. So however you decide to do it, you just have a few, few days worth of data, like maybe two or three days, depending on when you work. Um, and then after that, take some time to review it. So things you're going to look for. What tasks are being rolled over from day to day? What tasks do you dread doing? What tasks are like simple $10 an hour tasks versus tasks that you should be charging like $10,000 an hour for? Or maybe if that seems out of reach, maybe $100 an hour for. Um, the other thing that I like to focus on is what joy, what tasks give you so much joy and make you super happy. Those are important things to look at too, because you don't want to just outsource all the things that you shouldn't be doing because if they're bringing you joy, then I think that's something that you should evaluate if it, it's really bringing you money too. So, so don't discount just because you like to do something. Um, if you should be, be outsourcing it or not. After you've looked through that, hopefully it's easier to see what you've been outsourcing and who to outsource to. And if you need recommendations for any of those things, let me know. Um, I'm happy, you know, like I said, I have a graphic designer and a branding specialist that I outsource to. I have an amazing um, QuickBooks person, bookkeeper, tax person that I outsource to. Um, I have an amazing team that works. So if you, if you need some recommendations, I'm happy to help with that. Um, but one thing that's often overlooked that you can outsource is your content creation or your repurposing. So if those aren't tasks that you absolutely love, then I would consider outsourcing it. And we'll, we'll talk about that next. So second secret, find someone that is experienced in content management. So I'm going to take a guess, just a wild guess that you didn't hire your receptionist to make sales calls for you or that you didn't hire your salesperson to post to Facebook for you. Just, just making a guess that you hired them based on their strengths and to do specific jobs for you. Well, it should be the same thing with your content marketing team. They should be well-versed in social media, SEO, who your ideal client is and how to reach them. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces to content creation. And I think a lot of things that people don't consider, um, and there's, and, and I'll walk through that too, but Content marketing is, it's not just writing a text for your social media posts or recording a video. Um, it does require skill and thoughtfulness and planning. And that's one thing that we often, I have had people say to me before is, well, you're just writing a Facebook post. You're just finding a cute little graphic on Pinterest and sharing that. Like, I don't understand why there needs to be a strategy there know that there there does need to be a strategy there. Um, there is does need to be some thought that goes into that. Um, and you can find more about that on my content creation checklist. Again, if you just want to comment checklist, I'll send it to you. Uh, but the important thing is you need to take the time to get to know who you're outsourcing to. What are their strengths and weaknesses? Um, are they in line with your vision and your mission? That's super important. Are they Will they be reaching out to your ideal client? Do they understand what that means and what that process is? This person's part of your team, so it's essential that they understand your values, your ideal client, that they feel included, that they feel like they can reach out to you and talk to you, give you feedback. Um, it's really, in my opinion, to be successful, even more successful, you need to have a personal relationship with your team. Um, it really does help if you know who you are working with. 
Um, okay, third thing, know what the content creation process includes. As I mentioned, it's more than just creating a pretty graphic to put together on your Instagram grid. It's there. There is a, there's a few things that go into it. First of all, strategy. What's the goal of your content? Are you trying to get more sales? Are you trying to just uh, increase your visibility? Are you trying to get more speaking engagements? You know, what does that look like? What's the goal of it? Um, what type of content are you creating? Is it videos, blogs, social media, podcasts? Are you speaking and you want to share more about that? Um, the distribution, where are you going to share that content? What social media platforms are your clients on? And which ones do you enjoy the most that you want to play on? Um, optimization, what keywords are you using? What's trending? What hashtags should you be using? What groups should you be communicating with? Um, and then the last one there is analytics. What got engagement last week? What didn't? get engagement? What had crickets? What did your audience really respond to? And you know you should post more of that. So all of those things are things to consider within your within your content management. Whether you're doing it or you're having a team do it, it's important that everything has those five things in it. Um, and I'll write a blog post more about that. Um, I just had that thought so that we you guys can learn more about that. But business owners have to, you have to pay attention to the different types of mediums, the platform. There's lots of them. There's new ones coming up all the time. Um, and in this noisy world, it's really important to make sure that people can see you. So the latest statistic that I heard from Neil Patel is that prospects have to see your content 14 times before they purchase. It used to be like six to eight, um, but now it's up to 14, which is a lot of content. So, but thinking of those 14 times, it doesn't mean you have to talk to them 14 times. It could be that they're seeing you on their social media channels, that you're sharing infographics, you're creating webinars, you're giving a presentation, you're sending them a video, you're doing email marketing. Um, you know, obviously those need to be eye-catching and informative, but those all count as um, times your ideal client has seen you. So when you outsource your content management, they take care of all five of those things for you. So they take care of your strategy, the type of content that you should be creating, the distribution, the optimization, and the analytics. So um, when you are interviewing a content management team, I would ask them specifically about those five things. Um, the nice thing about having a content management team is that they take care of all those things for you. And then all you have to do is focus on sharing your message in a way that brings you the most joy. So is that through video, speaking, writing, um, whatever that is, your content management can, team can work around the distribution of that and getting it out in all the, the right places. So again, if you need help with your content creation process, comment checklist, and I'll send you the checklist. Um, and then I will be back here Monday at noon, every Monday at noon, Mountain Standard Time. And I hope that this Be Live stuff worked. I think it did. We'll see. <laughs> but I kind of like it. Um, and I'm Christy Hansvik of Simply Online, and we help you go from invisible to visible online in 30 minutes a week or less. So I'll see you next week. Bye.